Hi, my name is Amanda. I'm a product manager on Android. Today, my colleague Sean and I are going to discuss all things emoji on Android, starting with, first, why emojis are important. Second, what recent changes Android made, including platform level changes to our font system and Jetpack library changes to address issues with emoji. And third, how it all works. First, you may be wondering why we're focusing on emojis. What are the issues with emojis that need to be fixed? Well, we know that emojis are becoming more and more a critically important part of communication. Emoji usage consistently has grown over the last 10 years. And this year, global emoji usage has reached an all-time high. Users on some apps send billions of emojis every day, and more than one in five tweets now contain an emoji. Now, one of the specific problems that we're facing is that when a new Unicode emoji is launched, 96% of Android users do not get to see the latest emojis. This is significantly higher than iOS users, where only 16% of users don't see the latest emoji. Another interesting data point is that the top 100 emojis represent about 82% of all emojis that are shared between users. Unfortunately, about 20% of the time, when a user sends an emoji, the receiver sees a tofu, or a broken image, rather than the actual emoji the sender intended. So for example, on the screen, you see that the sender wanted to send a smiley face with a tear. And instead, the recipient got a box with an X in the middle, also known as a tofu. And the intent of the message is completely lost on the recipient. Another problem is that as Unicode adds new emojis that aim to represent more diversity and inclusion of emoji types, those emojis are not fully supported on Android. There are various levels of support depending on which version of Android is running. Let's take a look at some specific issues. On Android N and earlier versions, skin tone is not properly represented. Here you can see an example of a user sending an emoji representing an arm with a brown skin tone. But unfortunately, the receiver gets a decomposed version that shows an arm and a square representing the skin color that should be applied to the arm. Here's an example of an issue on Android O and earlier versions of the platform, where gender-inclusive emojis are not properly supported. And on Android P and below, multi-person, multi-skin tone emojis are not supported. As you can see on the screen, it is not a good user experience for the recipient and hurts communication between the sender and the receiver. Our goal is to make sure that every emoji is available to all Android users, regardless of the app that they're using. Whether it's a social app or a banking app or any other type, emojis are used in so many different contexts within apps that we want to make sure that users can use them with no issues. To address these issues and accomplish our goal, we have two solutions. First, updates to the Jetpack Library Emoji Compat, which is the backwards compatible solution for older platforms and covers what app developers can do. And second, updatable system fonts, which is the forward-looking solution for S and future versions of the platform. Next, Sean will walk you through updatable system fonts and changes to Emoji Compact. Thanks, Amanda. Hi, I'm Sean from the Android Text team, and I'm here to share a bit about Emoji in your application. First, some really good news. Starting in Android S, we introduced updatable system fonts, and the first font that we'll update is the Emoji font. Now, this is really good news as a developer because it means you never have to think about emoji again on S Plus devices. It's just taken care of for you. But we can't really use a time machine and port updatable system fonts to earlier versions of Android. We're still working on the time machine. But for now, if you do nothing in your app, you'll display tofu or broken emoji on Android before S. To fix that, you can use Emoji Compat. We launched this library a few years ago, and this year we put a lot of work into making it easier for you to use it in your application. In App Compat 1.3, if your app was asked to display a modern emoji, you'd get tofu or a misrender by default. And we wanted to make this a better experience for both you, the developer, and Android users. So in App Compat 1.4, we incorporated Emoji Compat into App Compat. And this is really big news. Out of the box, all apps using App Compat 1.4 will support modern emoji. To do this, we introduced a new artifact, Android X.emoji2. We added automatic configuration so it can configure itself to load the correct emoji font. And then with that, we integrated it into App Compat 1.4. And that's really it. This slide is all you need to know. Just bump your AppCompat version to 1.4, and you'll display modern emoji on API 19 and above.
You don't have to configure it or do anything. It'll all just work out of the box. And that's really it. The rest is just details that melt away. The rest of this talk is those details, and you have my permission to click to the next talk now. I'll wait. Just remember to upgrade AppCompat. Oh, hello. I assume if you're still here, you're interested in all those details. Emoji 2 is a new artifact that replaces AndroidX.Emoji. It has pretty much the same API as AndroidX.Emoji, just in a new package. We added a few new classes to it, a startup initializer and a default configuration. And while we were in there, we added nullability annotations throughout. Compared to AndroidX.Emoji, we also removed a few text view subclasses that aren't needed when using AppCompat. And this let us save about 14 kilobytes after R8. Now, one of the big new features in Emoji 2 is the EmojiCompat initializer. This is a startup library initializer that automatically configures EmojiCompat at app startup. Now, it's heavily tuned for performance. And for most apps, we recommend using the default configuration. However, if you've already profiled and squeezed every nanosecond out of app startup, there's a few corners you can cut. Now, before we continue, note that we are talking about microseconds, so this isn't likely to be a useful optimization for most apps. But if you do have extensive profiling, you can remove the startup library and thread creation costs. Before you go down this route, and fair warning, it's a bit of code, here's a few tips. First, make sure you initialize EmojiCompat prior to activity on create. This ensures that every text view will be able to display modern emoji. Then, just like EmojiCompat initializer, it's a really, really good idea to defer emoji font load until well after your first screen paints. It does run on a background thread, but it also does a lot of network and disk I.O., not the sort of thing you want contending with your first screen load. All of that said, for most apps, we strongly recommend using the default implementation of EmojiCompat Initializer. It is highly tuned for performance and should only be optimized after you fixed everything else. Another big feature we added is default configuration. In AndroidX.Emoji, you had to go find a bunch of boilerplate configuration in a sample and copy it into your app. No more. We added default emoji compat config, which you can use. It's used by emoji compat initializer, and it's also available if you're implementing a manual config in your app. In app compat, we integrated emoji2 into all views. This means you can just use a text view or edit text, and it will display modern emoji by default. All views with emoji2 integration have an emoji compat enabled attribute that you can use to control, well, if emoji compat is enabled for that view. This attribute is also exposed via getters and setters. Just using text view or edit text in XML works if your activity extends AppCompat activity. AppCompat activity installs a layout inflator that replaces text view with AppCompat text view and so on. In code, you should ensure that you create an AppCompat text view whenever you'd create a text view, and custom views should subclass their appropriate AppCompat subclass. The emoji compat enabled attribute is useful to avoid emoji processing in situations where you know text may never contain emoji. Now, actually, emoji processing on a string is incredibly cheap when there's no emoji. But there are some situations where every single nanosecond counts, and this knob is for those times. It's also useful if you want to process emoji on a background thread. All the app compat emoji2 integration does is call emoji compat.process at the right time after set text. Now you can disable this and move emoji processing to a background thread. Now, typically this isn't needed because emoji processing is fast enough. But if you're displaying a lot of text in a recycle view and getting a little bit of jank, this is an optimization to consider. Testing modern emoji is a bit more complicated. Due to the downloadable fonts integration, it's hard to make a general automated testing library that doesn't lead to either false positives or false negatives. And in practice, we also recognize that most developers will just test emoji compat integration manually. So the best option is to just share a list of emojis to test with, and that's exactly what we did in the new docs. They're really useful for both manual or screenshot testing. And there's some tips for what you need to do to configure a test emulator or device in the docs. And that's a deep dive into what's new in Emoji 2. If you're already using AndroidX.Emoji, we encourage you to switch to Emoji 2 shortly. The APIs stayed mostly the same and are just in a new package. The Emoji text view and friends that were in AndroidX.Emoji were moved to a new Emoji 2 views library, and they're really not needed if you're using AppCompat. OK, so upgrade to AppCompat 1.4 and well, that's really it. That's all you need to take away from this talk. Before we wrap up, let's talk a bit about how Emoji2 works. This is an emoji.
Actually, no. This is an image that I added to a slide, and that's kind of what Emoji Compat does to emoji. This is an emoji. An emoji is a graphical character that's part of a string. It's just like the letter I, except it draws quite differently, and it comes from a different font file. The thing is, computers don't really know about emoji, or really the letter I for that matter. As a view from the orbit of Pluto of what a string is, it's really just a list of code points. Now, these are numbers that are assigned to every character you've ever seen on a computer by Unicode. Now, Unicode isn't just a format, it's also a mailing list and meetings. So many meetings. Meetings where they decide things like the number seven is actually the letter I. Now, before we move on, seven isn't actually the code point for I, but this slide looked better this way. So what happens when you try to render this string on Android? Put simply, as a first step, the platform has to figure out the best font for each character. The inputs to this are the code point, as well as any font styling requested by your app. Now, the default font for V at a normal weight that's not italic on Android is Roboto Regular .ttf. Android iterates through the string, checking each character and finding the best font. It'll check the code point and any styling, and you can mix and match the same string, making some characters bold, and so on. However, for this simple string, it's always going to pick roboto-regular.ttf. Now, when it gets to the emoji, you might imagine it does something completely different. After all, it doesn't look anything like any of the other letters on the screen. But emoji are just text. They're represented by code points just like the letter I. And just like the letter I, the way to draw them is stored in a font. Android will try to look up multiface at a normal weight without italics. But this time, the roboto-regular isn't the best match. Instead, it'll find Nota Color Emoji. This is a pre-installed emoji font on AOSP, and it contains a picture for every emoji. Drawing an emoji from this font on platform is exactly the same as drawing the letter I. Look up the font file, and then draw it on screen. And on Android S and above, you can be sure that the platform will have emoji, since updatable system fonts will add modern emoji to the font file. But before S, we don't have any way to update the font, and this means Android doesn't have any idea what font to use for Multiface. Android will instead draw a fallback glyph called Tofu when it doesn't know how to render a character. And that's where Emoji2 comes in. Before it sends the string to platform, EmojiCompat.process is called on the string. This iterates through and finds the emoji that the platform doesn't know how to draw, adding an emoji span to each emoji. This is a replacement span, which means it will just replace whatever's in that section of the string. The first part draws just like normal using Roboto Regular TTF, but when Android finds the emoji span, it'll hand off drawing to the span. Inside the span, there's two important methods that Android uses. First, it gets the size, which tells Android how much room to reserve for this span in text layout. And then, when it's time to draw the string, it'll call draw on the emoji span instead of trying to draw itself. Inside the emoji span, it knows where the compat version of the emoji font is, and it can draw Meltyface directly from that. Going back to rendering, platform will call emoji span draw, and the entire region will be drawn by the emoji span instead of platform. Now, this is a completely different rendering path, and in effect, from platform's perspective, emoji span is just drawing a picture in the middle of the string. And that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the details section, and remember, please upgrade to AppCompat 1.4 and let the details melt away.